On September 26, 2014, the National Post, a national newspaper of Canada, describes a proposal by former Canadian Prime Minister Kim Campbell. The proposal is to take the Canadian Parliament and every seat in that Parliament divided into two seats. One for a man, one guaranteed to be filled by a woman. Uh, why? Uh, former Prime Minister Campbell says this will end up being a more representative system. Uh, this is the main state legislature in the United States. Would such a change uh, benefit the representation of Mainers in our state government? In order to answer that question, we need to think a little bit more carefully about what representation really is. In 1967, political scientist Hannah Pitkin described two kinds of representation. The first is descriptive representation. Descriptive representation happens when political leaders resemble the population in their identity, in what they look like. The second kind of representation involves substantive representation, when political leaders resemble the population in policy, in what they promote in terms of ideas as laws. Now imagine in this circumstance we have eight blues and two reds in a Congress. Well, here blues would rep enjoy a descriptive representation of 80%, 8 out of 10. But imagine that in this hypothetical instance, the two reds and eight blues held different kinds of ideas, pro-red policy and pro-blue policy. Here, pro-red policy enjoys a substantive representation of 60%. Now, that's a hypothetical situation. A research question would look at the real world and say, does descriptive representation guarantee substantive representation? If so, the hypothesis would be that people who hold characteristic X are more likely to support pro-characteristic X policy. If you were going to carry this research out, what would your independent variable be? What would your dependent variable be? And how would you operationalize those variables? This isn't a hypothetical question. I'd like you to deepen your understanding of substantive representation and uh, descriptive representation and how the two of them are related to one another by looking at the main state legislature. Particularly, I'd like you to go to openmepolitics.com, the website for open main politics and open source freely available uh, database of main state legislative actions for the current legislature. I'd like you to search for some bills on subjects that you believe uh, have to do with the interests of one sort of identity or another that people could be descriptively represented uh, by according to the status of legislators. Are they men? Are they women? Is this region? And then I'd like you to look at the sponsors both the principal sponsor and the co-sponsor. I'd like you to find out what that status is for each of those sponsors. And then I would like you to go compare that to the representation of that status in senators and representatives across the entire main state legislature. Depending on which status you choose, uh, this could be an easy or a difficult task. I uh, encourage you to choose wisely. Compare the two, the status of those who support the bill that you believe promotes a particular interest, and the status of legislators altogether, and you will have uh, an answer to our research question. In order to get the answer to that research question, you'll have to frame your hypothesis, you'll have to operationally define an independent variable, and a dependent variable. I know you can do this. You just have to put the pieces of social research together.